Okay, so sort of next up is the... He's not actually a dragonborn. He's actually like a half-dragon. His name is Nero. This is Carl's character. Deus, the necromancer, is uh, Dustin's character. Um, Nero is a half-dragon, specifically a half-silver uh, dragon. He's not necessarily a a dragonborn. He's very similar, especially consider, but he isn't because he has more of a human appearance. He essentially was born between a union of a polymorphed silver dragon, who was female, and a male uh, knight. So essentially, what had happened with him was that you know the this dragon fell in love with this other per you know they they had a relationship and we haven't really gotten into too much detail with that but essentially yeah uh, you know the stuff happens and they ended up you know having a child and so the knight goes back to his kingdom and doesn't exactly even know too much about what happened meanwhile uh the dragon she gives birth to this half dragon so he's partly draconic, he has some draconic features. One of the things that was really unique that we did was that basically he has human skin, but if he's ever injured, um, his, his skin won't actually regrow what will, what will be underneath it and what will regenerate as he heals are these scales. So if he were to like, if for example, like, if his whole face got burned off like a like a two face kind of situation, it would literally be his half of his face or most of his face would be now draconic or scaled. He sort of has the uh, the jaw because he has the draconic like sort of teeth, um, and he also has a claw on one of his uh, or on his arms or on his hands rather. Uh, so he's very clearly not human, but. Um, he looks mostly human, which was important. He's not actually like a dragon born where he's this draconic sort of thing. He he is obviously not human, but he looks mostly human. Um, enough to actually where I gave him an inability where, you know, he has this monstrous appearance, so it's hard for him to, like, uh, have social interactions because people are looking at him like, oh, God, a monster. Because, you know, dragon people, very rare Possible, but not exactly a very uh, common occurrence. Like, you don't normally have dragon people walking around. Um, the the interesting thing is that he basically, after this dragon gave birth to him, he was dropped off in uh, because the dragon lives on these uh, peaks uh, in the mountains. And so she drops him off with these dwarves who live inside the mountains, and, and she's telling uh, them, like, oh, raise him, you know, as if he was one of your own. And all this, so he is. He was actually raised by dwarves, and so uh, he doesn't have any skills to reflect that yet. But I think later on, we that's something that we were gonna say. Well, later on, you're probably gonna end up getting some like stone, stone cutting or stone related skills. You know, you were raised by dwarves. Uh, you aren't actually like raised by a dragon. You were raised by a different culture, and, and it sort of uh, shows because he he is somewhat isolated. Um, and he spent most of his time in sort of that forest, like the the world forest. So, like, he spent most of his time in the wilderness. He's not essentially like a ranger, but he is a very curious sort of person. Well, he ended up putting on his shoes this sort of the seeker of uh, knowledge. So, he, he isn't like a... We, we don't really want to call him a ranger, but he's the closest thing we have to, like, that kind of archetype. Um, but he's not... That's not really his thing. Like, he doesn't ride animals... He knows about animals, but he doesn't, like, actually, like, communicate with them uh, directly or anything like that. He doesn't, you know, use... He mostly uses a sword and his claws as a weapon. He also has a breath weapon, which is ice, you know, cold-based. Which is interesting, because one of the things we point out was there's no ice on the planet. So, like, if he were to freeze something people would be very, like, confused by that. Like, it'd be a very foreign thing to see something, like, freeze over or, like, become cold. So it was this, we had this really funny, uh, like, scene that I kind of played out, not in the roleplay, but just out of the game, where it was like, imagine if they were on a boat 
and these pirates are sort of coming down the river towards them. And he just starts freezing the... Oh, he just starts, like, breathing ice, like Superman or something, onto the, uh, onto the, sort of, the, the water. And it starts, like, turning the water into, uh, ice. And then the, the pirates would just be like, well, what, what is that? And then they'd actually, like, hit the ice and probably crash and then, f like, fall onto the ice and start slipping around and, like, falling over because they have no idea what that, like, they, they have no conception of, like, what that is. It'd be alien to them, which to me is hilarious. Um, um, he doesn't necessarily have a lot of magic power, but what, what the dwarves did do was they gave him... Uh, they gave him a lot of equipment that would um, help him augment himself. So he essentially has a uh, very cool design, by the way. I like this. He sort of has this... Because um, the interesting thing also about his character is that the dwarves actually worship this dragon that is his mother as sort of this god. So in reality, his character is almost like a Christly sort of figure. Like he is like the this messiah almost to the dwarves. So they respect him very highly and they treat him very well and they give him like this good equipment. So they give him like this, you know, dwarven crafted, you know, sword that actually has this really cool thing where, uh, uh, I don't know how realistic, it isn't meant to be realistic though, but it's this thing where his sword can actually like retract. So he can sh shoot out the blade out of the sword and then like, you know, Stick it back in. It's sort of like a clockwork thing, so it's almost like steampunkish. Where he has this sword that can, like, uh, like a needle, just sort of, you know, so it can function as like a short-ranged, uh, you know, attack weapon if if he needs to do that. Um, he also has this gauntlet for his claw that you know covers his claw with like metal, so it's even more powerful. Uh, he has a dwarven crafted sort of magic ring that lets him. Basically, what it does is it amp he doesn't have he doesn't have magical talent necessarily. the The breath that he has, like a lot of his draconic stuff, is magical, but he doesn't really uh, specialize in casting specifically. He could cast magic, but it would require him to understand a lot more about you know arcane theory and like elemental you know whatever. He could probably try to cast a spell if he wanted, but the idea is he has this ring. Uh, uh, this, uh, this dwarven, like, golden sort of ring. Not really like the Lord of the Rings. It's more like, uh, it's not like that. It's more like, you know, very thick. So it's like this thick dwarven ring, like a, like one of those rune rings or like, like a rune armor or something like that. It's a very rune, it's like a rune ring. And essentially he puts it on and it amplifies his mana so he can basically cast, like, simple spells. Like, think, uh, prestidigitation in D&D &D or like a hedge magic he can do like really simple magical abilities like um like lifting small objects or like changing colors or he used it to in in the most recent session he used it to like light a torch just sort of simple stuff like that that would be like you know basic magical things he can still do um he could also probably cast spells like that's not beyond him it's just something he isn't really aware of exactly like he doesn't know how to cast a spell he knows like ma he knows about magic vaguely, but not directly. Like he doesn't have training, unlike the mages. So he um, the thing with his character is that um, he know because he lives in the forest. He studies the forest. He's noticed a lot of strange things going on in the forest. Something seems wrong in the forest. So he went to and this is was all pre session stuff that we had set up. Was that he went into Corviston the town. Uh, the the academy city, and he sort of went, and he went to the mages, and he says, "Oh, you have to you have to do something. The magic in the forest is unbalanced. There's something wrong going on." And they all, you know, sort of laugh, you know, at him. They're like, "Oh, ha ha ha! You know, why should we listen to you? You're a monster. You know, they don't know who he is, so they're like, "Oh yeah, well, sure. We, you know, we're gonna go into the forest, and you'll probably try to eat us. I don't you know. I don't know. We're not gonna follow you in there." And Deus, who was actually there at the meeting, was like, hey, you guys, shut up. He's probably right about it. I'm going to go with him. You guys, you know, you don't know what you're doing. And the old mage is to sort of leave them alone. And so Deus agrees, okay, I'm going to set up a, I'm going to go see if anyone else can help us. We're, I'll go with you and, and we'll check this out. 
So he goes, Deus goes through the city at that point, starts, you know, knocking down, knocking on people's door, knocking down people's door. <gasps> you must help him out. He starts knocking on people's doors, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I need some, I need some uh, help from some mages. So one of the people he, he calls upon is, one of these mages is living in sort of this, like, you know, a uh, hovel of a house. So he's sort of living, and he has all these books scattered around, and his name is uh, Bureg. This is the uh, character of one of our other um, new players. His name is Dor. Very cool guy, very creative guy. He he made this character who is essentially like, this universe is equivalent of like a red mage or like a sort of like a non-classified sort of mage. He does a lot of, um, his magical style is a lot, uh, he picked what his the descriptor is, is impulsive. So he's sort of, he's not like this, crazy guy, but he's very experiment, like, he's a magical sort of, uh, experimenter kind of guy, like me, like, I like doing this with RPGs, where I start, like, trying to mix things around and have fun, he's kind of like that with magic, so he'll just try almost everything and see how it works, he's sort of like a jack-of-all-trades, he has a lot of different abilities, uh, the two major ones that he uses are, I think, telekinesis, so, like, pushing and moving things around with magic, uh, and then also, he uses a lot of uh, alteration or transmutation, very like sort of alchemical, sort of m turning, uh, you know, one material into another, or like modifying one thing into another thing, or doing stuff like that. Um, that that sort of thing um, are his specialties. But he's technically only specialized in transmutation, but he's not a full transmuter. He didn't study at any kind of magical college. He's just sort of, he was a prodigy who sort of learned magic uh, through his own personal study. And he also loves kind of exploring in the forests. He has basically the way he described his equipment. I liked how a lot of these characters like went into detail, like Carl and, and Dor really go into detail when they're describing like their, their uh, equipment and stuff. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, Nero, Carl's character, the, the half-dragon, he has this leather armor that's sort of silver, like, tinted, not, not like, plated, like, it's not, like, armor, uh, necessarily, but it, well, he has, because he has gauntlets, but beyond that, uh, and, like, uh, like, like, greaves, but he has sort of, like, it's silver colored, so his armor kind of matches the whole silver dragon vibe. It's leather, but it's sort of like leather that's kind of colored to be, or tinted to be silver. And it has, like, these, and the way he drew it is really awesome. He has, like, these, like, dwarven sort of gems in parts of the armor. So it's very, like, cool. It's very nice. Like, he, he got really hooked up by having these, uh, dwarven sort of people helping him out. Um, anyway, uh, Bureg, he, what he wears is essentially he has... Uh, these silk gloves on his hands, which I'll talk about uh, when I get to it. There's this, I want to explain what the gloves do, but he has these silk gloves, like these white silk gloves on his hands. He has like full, uh, you know, covering, like he covers his entire body. He has got, you know, explorers sort of goggle, like almost steampunkish sort of goggles on and like a uh, coif around his head. So he, his head is like covered and he has a scarf that he wears sometimes and essentially you can imagine like his whole body is almost covered with like leather and like very light very light armor but like sort of imagine like almost like his whole body is sort of covered with something and he has these you know high uh like these boots that are good for like traversing environments like they give him a bonus against like you know heavy terrain and all this stuff so he's like decked out for exploring like he's wearing full explorer's gear it's very cool. So this guy is basically the kind of guy who will go around in the forest looking for magical things or or just doing experiments with magic in the forest uh, because the, it's a very high mana area, this forest. It's, so it's good to sort of, you know, have, have protection because there are monsters in there as well as, you know, magical things. So you can never be too sure what's going to pop out. Um, anyway... He, he agrees to join uh, Deus, but before Deus leaves, I think it was at night, uh, he says, okay, well, give me a minute, I'm going to go take care of something. So this was, this was where we started these uh, session zero, which was the sort of introduction session. 
and I'll talk about that in the next part.